Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to unbox and review this new Netgear Access Point. This is specifically the WAX 630 EP model. So this is going to work with a managed switch. So that's the setup that I'm going to do. This is actually a pretty beefy size access point. So we have the LED indicators right here. We have the power port. We have the Ethernet ports. We have the 2.45 and the 6 gigahertz band. So this is a tri-band system that supports Wi-Fi 6C. So you see the 6 gigahertz band right here. So let's look at the bottom of this thing. So we have a gigabit port. We have a 2.5 gigabit port and we have our power port. Now if it does, if the Ethernet does come in with PoE, so if you have a compatible managed switch that does support PoE, which I will be testing with, I won't actually need to connect the power port. But if I am not using that, I would need to connect the power port. Uh, obviously you can wall mount this thing, so I'm hiding all this info right here. Uh, but this is the wall mount for it right here. So you would pretty much, you know, drill this in the, into the wall if you wanted to do that. Uh, and then you would basically just slide it in and then you'd be good to go and slide it back out. You push this button and then it would allow you to slide back out, come out and call it a day. So very nice, aesthetically pleasing um, device. And then we have our power port. It is 100 to 120 volts at Output is 12 volts at 3.5 amps. Again, assuming you're not using PoE and we have some screws and anchors and stuff. So good to go either way. Let's test this thing out. So I've been playing with access points for a few weeks now and they're actually connected right now. So this one's actually hooked up to my managed switch that does support PoE. So this is actually being powered just by this ethernet cable, which is fantastic. The other access point is actually hooked up directly to the router and I am using the Netgear Orbi router. If you guys are wondering, I turned off the Orbi satellites because the Netgear Orbi is a mesh system. So I turned off the Orbi satellites, so I just left the Orbi router running and the other access point has to actually hook up to power because it is connected to um, the Orbi itself and the Orbi uh, doesn't support PoE. So it could obviously do ethernet, uh, but it can't provide power over ethernet. Unlike the managed switch, I have two managed switches here. Uh, both of these can do that and I will make a video separately on these managed switches. So basically this is an eight port, this is a 10 port, uh, eight of the ports are ethernet, two of them are the fiber optic, that's FP ports basically. Um, and both of these do support PoE. So subscribe if you guys haven't already, if you guys wanna watch videos on the Netgear managed switches as well as other mesh systems because I have a whole bunch of mesh systems and router reviews. Okay, so I pretty much did all my uh, speed tests, range tests using my following Wi-Fi devices. And um, I have all those numbers right here. And we'll start with the internet speed test. Now, because this is an access point, eventually it has to make its way to the router. So no matter how fast your access point or router is, it's actually gonna operate at the slowest of any of the ports. So for example, my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download, but the port on this, the fastest port on this is 2.5 gigabit so if i connect to this i can't go faster than 2.5 gigabits on wi-fi um, which i've never seen on a wi-fi 60 device anyways uh, and then the secondary port on this is a gigabit port so if i actually hooked up my laptop which i did uh, and i did a speed test i would actually be capped to gigabit speeds um, so even though this 2.5 goes to a 10 gig and this 10 gig goes to the orbeez 10 gig um, because i'm going through this guy it's capping my internet speeds to that, uh, to those numbers. Okay, so looking at the results, the Wi-Fi 7 devices did better than the Wi-Fi 60 devices, but both did fairly well considering these are internet speed tests. Now to find out the true performance of this access point, I need to do a local speed test server test and I've made a separate video on this in detail showing you guys how I set it up, what tools I use. I basically use open speed test server, which is fantastic by the way. In this case, I got better speeds for Wi-Fi 7 and uh, Wi-Fi 6E, really got some solid numbers. Considering this is a Wi-Fi device, this is ridiculously fast. For the wired backhaul, we pretty much got the same numbers and that's because this is an access point and I ha have the other one hooked up through the RB. So the other one's also hooked up through the 2.5 gigabit port. So if I had to hook it up through the gigabit port, it would go slower. But 
because it is hooked up to the 2.5 gigabit port through, uh, directly to the RB and this one's going through the switch, I pretty much get the pretty much very similar numbers to each other. Uh, so very good results. So we get into wireless backhaul and there is a reduction in speed, which is to be expected because this access point is wirelessly talking to the other access point. Now, in all fairness, I was expecting the speeds to be in the 800 megabits per second, something like that, where it ended up in the five and 600s, which is not bad, but I was expecting it to be better than this uh, based on its speed rating. Next, we get into range test. Now, range will vary based on location. Essentially, there are, the more obstructions there are, the less range you're gonna get. So, you know, if you're in a building, if you're in a, with a lot of walls, a lot of the routers, if you're in a, you know, if you have multiple floors, all of this stuff can hurt your range. So essentially more obstructions typically equals less range. But this one actually got um, some solid numbers at 20 feet away inside my place, got some solid numbers at 50 feet outside, getting some super fast numbers. And even at 100 feet, which is across the street, um, still getting some solid numbers out of this thing. So very impressive uh, in general with all the performance uh, minus the wireless backhaul. So aside from that, um, the numbers actually looked really, really good. So when you're setting it up, it tells you to go to, I think, APLogin.net. Um, that doesn't always work. Um, you might need to clear your cache on your Chrome browser. Um, however, if that doesn't work, um, really the easiest way to do it is actually just to go to the IP address um, that's assigned to this. So if you can look up what IP address this has through um, the Netgear Orbi will tell me, or if you download the Inside app, the Inside app will actually tell you what the IP address is uh, as well. So it's pretty easy. You just type in the IP address, it just takes you to the page, it gives you the main dashboard of um, all the stuff here, uh, connected, you know, the frequencies and everything like that, uh, and you're golden. So now when you go to management, it's going to say that I'm managing it via Netgear Inside because you manage it one way or the other. So either you pick the Netgear inside or you pick the local configuration. So I first um, used the web browser right here for the local configuration. Um, I played with that, got it all working, did all my wired backhaul testing, everything like that. And then when I went to wireless backhaul, I then set up the Netgear inside app and I played with that. Um, so they're both really good, um, generally speaking. And again, the local one is free. Uh, the Netgear inside it is free for one year after that requires a subscription, but again, um, not fully necessary. Uh, anyways, um, so if we go to wireless, we go to basic, this is where you set up the, the settings. You can make more SSIDs, which is nice. So you can make a, um, like a main one, you can make a guest one. And if you're, if you're wondering, so a few things I was wondering was, okay, my Orbi, I literally just type the same SSID and password as the Orbi, and it actually switches between um, the different, this access point and my router, which is really nice, because I was concerned about that initially. I'm like, oh, are they gonna clash with each other, or will they hand off, and yeah, it actually works just fine. Um, you can also make another SSID. Um, so this is all the stuff, but it's it's most of it's grayed out because I'm supposed to be managing it from the Netgear Inside app. So again, you have a whole bunch of settings. Um, one thing I did notice, and I've been playing with this quite a bit, is when you first get it, when I first got it, the speeds were actually really slow. And the reason for that was that the these channel widths were actually on the slower end. So this one, I changed it to dynamic 2040. This one was on 40, I changed it to 160. And then I went back to 40 and then I went to 80. You probably want to put this on dynamic. And then the channel width for the 6 gigahertz, the same thing. You probably want to put it on dynamic because if the channel width is, you want to have the channel width at the faster frequencies because the phones that can go faster, uh, if they can't connect to that, um, it's going to, the speeds are going to be much slower. So this is something I highly recommend um, changing when you get this. You can also adjust the output power and stuff like that. Um, and then there's, you know, there's, there's a decent number of options in here. Um, so things you could play with and, um, yeah, I, again, there's no specific mesh option in here, but I think you could probably do a mesh option if you actually tinkered with some of the settings. Um, so someone was saying that, oh, you might need to make a bridge. Um, so I, I didn't play with that again, cause the Netgear Insight was 
uh, super easy. And then there's this whole monitoring thing where you could see like all your connected clients and all that other stuff. So it's, it's kind of nice um, that it shows you everything. Um, and then you could disable the 2.4 if you want to, or the five gigahertz or the six gigahertz. So you could disable things as you see fit. So when you download the Netgear Inside app, it actually shows you, um, it, it finds everything that you have. Um, as long as you're connected to the network and it says like, hey, do you want to set this up and stuff? Uh, and then you could click it. Now you could also see that my managed switch is in there as well. Um, but we'll just, we'll just stick to the, to the access point. Um, so this is the root access point, which happens to be the other one, not this one. Uh, and this is kind of what everything looks like. So if I clicked on clients, that's, it would show you like everything that's connected to it. Um, IP and stuff. SSID, this is what we saw over there. Again, I can make a new SSID if I wanted to. So if you want to have a main, a guest, if you want to have an internet of things, you can actually control that. And this is the mesh topology. So when you go here, um, this one is kind of far from the other one right now. And it's still set up in wireless configuration. Uh, I didn't change it back to ethernet. Um, so that's why it's showing fair. And this is decently far away. Uh, I typically don't put it this far away, but uh, for this demo, I connected it on this table, which uh, is not ideal because the Orbi router is right there as well. Uh, but just, just to show you guys, uh, and then if I click on settings and then I could do auto, I could do shared, I could do dedicated backhaul. Uh, if I do dedicated backhaul, then I could say if it's a root only or an extender only or disable the mesh. Uh, and then if I do uh, dedicated, um, takes a couple seconds and stuff. Um, but basically then I could pick the frequencies um, when I do that. I have to check the other one. Okay, so yeah, it's just the five gigahertz. Mesh topology settings. Okay, so right here. Um, so this one, you could say, oh, my preferred one is five gigahertz or the six gigahertz. So you could play around with this um, if you want to, essentially. Um, yeah, and then the radio and channels. This is where you could set the dynamic. This, this is what I was talking about. So when I got it, it was all slow. Uh, then the five gigahertz, I said dedicated. So now it blocks out the five gigahertz. So you can't actually touch that. Uh, but the six gigahertz you could touch and then again you could put on dynamic and then click done and save and stuff like that. Output power you could adjust the full half quarter or minimum. Um, so, or eighth as well. So this thing, the inside app is actually kind of like a super simplified way of managing the stuff and it is cloud based. So I could actually manage this uh, as long as I have an internet connection. So I could be, I don't have to be home to actually manage this network. So it's it's actually kind of, uh, not kind of, it's actually very convenient to have. Now, is it worth getting this thing? Why or why not? Well, as always, it depends on your situation. So this is a really good access point uh, for anyone that pretty much is planning on running wires. Uh, if you're going to hide it away somewhere, I mean, you don't have to do that. You could just run this, you know, just place this on a desk and just run it that way. So it's not absolutely necessary, but I really love the fact that it has PoE. Um, so if I wanted to mount it, I just run ethernet, uh, pop it out, connect it to this thing and seamless hides away. looks really nice. Has some solid performance. Um, uh, really the only con, uh, for this thing that I noticed was the wireless backhaul speeds were not quite as fast as I would want them to be. Uh, but everything else was solid. So setup was great. Uh, wired backhaul performance was fantastic. Range was great. Um, the fact that it works with a mesh system or a regular router, um, just, just awesome. I, I honestly, genuinely, uh, really impressed with this thing. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.